we got a couple of teams coming off some short weeks, a lot of games uh, over the past, what, 11, 12 days for both these teams. Um, San Francisco going to Seattle. And, dude, I just whenever I hear about Seattle playing in a primetime game, I can't get that 6-6 six, six overtime. Was that Thursday night? Was that a Thursday night uh, football, Arizona Cardinals, Seattle? <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope this game's a little bit more fun. I think we have some injuries on uh, both sides of uh, or both defenses that should open up some a little bit of explosive plays for, for the offenses here. So I think we'll at least have some fun in this one. This should be a, an offensive matchup. Yeah, both these teams are coming off of losing streaks. Like, they don't look too hot. Both teams are dealing with injuries. If you look at Seattle, their defense is not looking too hot right now. Their offensive line is not looking too hot. So, uh, the total is 49. This feels like, I, I look, I know it's a Thursday night division rivalry game. You know, you usually want to go unders, but this feels like this could be just an absolute shit show as far as tons of offensive scoring and defenses can't do much. Let's get into it. It's what is up, guys? Welcome to the Edge DFS. My name is Tyson Smith, joined by Ellie Hernandez. Ellie, what's going on with you, man? How you doing? How was your uh, week five football? Hey, man, I'm staying alive, right? Nothing crazy. I did have a couple best ball lineups. Uh, I didn't get as crazy in the best ball. I know we, we talked a little bit about it, um, but didn't get as crazy in the best ball. But I had a couple lineups pop up doing okay. Uh, just so happens those lineups also have Jaden Daniels and a guy we're going to talk about a little bit tonight, Jordan Mason. Uh, if you don't have him in uh, some season long, you're, you're, you're not doing too hot. But so how are you doing? You're the one dealing with, uh, what, hurricane number two? Yeah, dude. Um, we should be fine. We're in Georgia. We're, we're in South Georgia on the coast. We should be fine. I uh, got some family in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Hopefully they'll be good. But uh, I'm 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 ready for hurricane season to be over. Uh, <laughs> I moved to the South. You know, I moved to Florida. Now I'm you know now I'm in Georgia. A few years ago, I'm still getting used to uh, all the hurricanes. I know that when I uh, whenever I get whenever I buy a house here, I'm definitely getting a damn generator. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> let's move on here. We got an NFC West matchup. Thursday night football. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me pull this up correctly here. So this is a 49 total. Like I said earlier, three and a half point favorites on the road are the 49ers. Dude, the Seahawks, like, <clears throat> they started out hot, but every year we see one of these teams that just starts out pretty good. You know, maybe they're 4-0, maybe they're 3-0, and and you're like, okay, that's a great team, and then they just collapse. I'm not saying the Seahawks are that team, but right now it just does not look – they're not looking very good. That game against the Giants did not – I mean, it, it, that was a kind of a shit show, to be honest. It was not a, a good-looking game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I got a frog in my throat here. Um, and look, the 49ers lost to the Dane Cardinals in Santa Clara. Like, uh, that, that, that's rare. As Cardinals fans, we know it. Um, so, look, I, I, I mean, McCaffrey, that's, that's, that's proving to be a much bigger deal than I think we're realizing. This team is still very talented. Um, Mason has done a good job, but, hey, he gave up a fumble last week that basically lost him the game. So, wh what are you thinking about this game, man? Like, I feel like... This, this just feels like such an obvious San Francisco win, like maybe a get-right situation. Seattle's trending down. I know San Francisco has struggled, but they're still probably like the favorite in the NFC, you'd have to think. Um, they'll get their shit together. McCaffrey is probably going to come back in a few weeks. We'll see. What are you thinking about this game, man? Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm gonna have to agree with you. Uh, I think this kind of the, the short week benefits San Francisco. Um, Kyle Shanahan just. Yeah, we've talked about it before. He's he's an excellent head coach. Um, I think he's gonna have this team well prepared uh, to to play Seattle. And to your point, Seattle. You know, they started off hot, but you, you got to look at who they played. Um, 
I mean, it, it was Bo Nick's first game, right? You, you had the Patriots in there. Um, Patriots are, are making a bold move, and they're changing their quarterback uh, week five, right? So, like, it, I don't know. I think uh, I think Seattle looked good early on, but it was easy to look good against who they were playing against. So, um, their injuries are stacking up. I think that we're kind of seeing where they have some holes just as a team. Uh, San Francisco, they, they pretty much got everybody back except for uh, Christian McCaffrey, right? Offensively, at least. You got IU Kittle. Uh, he's still questionable, and I, I think he, he should play. But, um, you know, you, you're starting to get some of your weapons back. Uh, you, you, Jerome Jennings is back, and I think that just benefits Brock, Brock Purdy a little bit more, right? He seems to be a little bit more comfortable when he has all his weapons, and um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think you want to read too much into what happened last week, right? They, the Cardinals always get their asses beat by San Francisco. Like it, it, it's always a game for them. It's always meaningful to to win in San Francisco. You know what I mean? So like, that was a very emotional game, and I, I would expect San Francisco ready to come out and play. I know that was a really long fucking story for the intro, but <laughs> I, I think San Francisco wins this game, man. And I, I just. Seattle's just on too much of a downtrend for me. I think this could probably get a little ugly, and we should we we should see some sloppy football. There's enough like like line injuries too to see stuff like that. Yeah, I mean Seattle's offensive line is not doing good. They're ranked 27th according to PFF. The right side of their line is not looking too hot. Uh, you know Bosa should be able to eat in this game, and if he could put pressure on Gino, maybe to make make, make some mistakes. But last week. Uh, the Seahawks against the Giants, they just did not move the ball well. It just it just felt like such a struggle for them to get down the field. And then they get down the field in the third quarter, and DK Metcalf has a fumble. He's had like back-to-back weeks with a fumble. It just feels like they're struggling. But I still think they have a very talented offense. I think Geno can pick up some yards on the ground. We saw it last week. And he's going to throw the ball a ton. Now, I think they should just establish the run immediately in this game. They got two good running backs. They should just run the damn ball. I just don't see them sticking with it, unfortunately. But San Francisco isn't looking too hot uh, 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 as far as like defensive stopping the run. So uh, there's just a lot of different ways this game can go. I'm just going to play it as I think this can be sort of a a sloppy shootout simply because the defenses might not be able to stop anybody. And I'm leaning towards, if anything, San Francisco puts up some points and maybe their defense steps up a little bit. But Seattle's got to establish the run here, man. You can't have Geno throwing the ball 50 times or whatever it is. That's just insane. All right, um, so like I said, the the Seahawks last week, Tyrone Tracy Jr., 129 yards and 18 carries. You saw, um, is it, was it, why am I thinking Shepard? Oh, Shepard's in my head, the the Giants. Uh, You you saw them give up some some yards in the air. It, It feels like their defense is not looking too hot. I know that San Francisco has kind of owned them recently. But it's a, it's a new head coach. The Ravens defensive coordinator comes over, and if you rem- you remember last year, the Ravens tore up Purdy. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Purdy had two what two picks last week, both on deflections. So I'm not really blaming him. I think Purdy can have a pretty good game in this one. Uh, let's get into injuries here. Quite a bit to talk about. Yeah, just pain. It was pain everywhere. So let's start. Where do you want to start? Seattle? Yeah, sure. So, Reek Woolen, Nwosu, Byron Murphy, out. You got Julian Love, Derek Hall, Mafe, questionable. We don't know who's going to play, who's not. The moral of the story is their defense is tore up. Um, I, just see the, I just see the 49ers coming out, throwing the ball. Ayuk woke up last week. I think Debo gets heavily involved in this game. You're going to see some Mason... Uh, Kittle is always a possibility. Like those, all those guys from the 49ers are going to be my focus for captain. I think I just feel like the, the, the 49ers, this feels like a get, get right game for them where they put up 42 points or something. Um, these injuries are not looking too good for them. Anything jump out to you? I mean, Reek Woolen being out is not, is not a good thing. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to echo that. He's, he's easily their best corner. Um, 
and you know we all know that the Niners have a couple uh, solid wide receivers, so that's probably the one that's sticking out to me the most. And obviously, Byron Murphy being out, he, it's going to impact their depth on uh, uh, you know being able to rush the passer. Um, and I, I, that that really is just going to impact uh, a lot of their ability to stay in this game. Man, they they need to they need to make sure that they're putting some pressure on on on, on the, the pass game. Yeah. Uh, other side, I didn't since they're on the West Coast. When I was prepping the show, I didn't get like an official. Um, but the Nick Wagoner, I believe he's some sort of beat writer, had this tweet. You've got out Jordan Elliott, defensive tackle, Flanagan fouls, Hufunga. That's a big deal. And then Jake Moody got hurt, so we got another kicker to talk about. Chris Con- Conley is questionable, and Traverius Ward being questionable is a big deal. It feels like if, if Ward is out, you know, I, I feel a little bit more comfortable playing a guy like DK Metcalf a lot. We'll see how that goes. We'll see if, if Ward is able to, to, to figure this out. But Hufunga being out, uh, we saw the Cardinals kind of tear him up last week. I mean, they didn't have an uh, outstanding game, but they ended up winning that game. And their offense looked pretty good against this defense. What are you seeing here, man? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Ward being out is kind of a big deal. Jake Moody, I think, is just the most interesting piece. Just like, are they going to be able to sign a kicker who's going to be competent in time? Because uh, for whatever reason, uh, those are the those are the big players right now, um, kickers. But uh, yeah, I, I think the the Niners' defense is uh, you know, sneakily good. They haven't allowed a three hundred yard passer this year. It doesn't look like so. I think. Um, Really, the the status of Ward kind of does matter a lot, but uh, I'm sure he'll 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 be good to go. All right, so let's move on to let's do our breakdown here. We're gonna go position by position. We're gonna start with quarterback. Let's break it down. Break it down. So we're in Sabersim here, and by the way, guys, if you don't have Sabersim, give it a try. I, if you do a if you do a, a trial from I think it's a five day trial. Sign up on Thursday. Take that all the way into Monday. I mean, get yourself a full weekend of football in. It's huge, man. Uh, Jordan Mason is. Uh, we're going to start with quarterbacks, actually. Let's do that. Ninety four hundred for Brock Purdy. Geno Smith ninety two hundred. These these quarterback pricings consistently. <clears throat> It, uh, is it like some sort of direct thing that DraftKings is doing where they're raising up the, the kicker pricing and they're bringing just bringing down the quarterback pricing? I, I don't know, man. Brock Purdy at 9,400. It's a 49 total, dude. Geno Smith at 9,200. He's going to throw the ball a ton. Feels like you're, we're going to want to get both of these quarterbacks in now. I think the field is going to feel that way. They're both going to be between 50 to 60% owned in the flex. So, you know, that's just one way to get different is just focus on a four stack with the quarterback um, and fade the other quarterback. Uh, it could be a way to doing it. I'm, I, I'm more likely to try to get both of these guys, especially for cash or single entry. What are we thinking, man? To me, Brock Purdy feels like a pretty good captain option. But Geno Smith, he looked he had some wheels last week. Oh, uh, he's no Kyler Murray, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but you know, seeing Geno Smith, if the, whatever their, his rushing prop is, it feels like you want to take the over potentially on that. Uh, but if he could put up 30, 40 yards on the ground, 250 yards and a touchdown or two, I mean, he feels like a really good option as well. 9,200. What do you think? Yeah, man, absolutely. So, uh, I'm looking at uh, Brock Purdy here. It looks like his snap counts up to hundred percent. And, uh, when you're getting that kind of work at the quarterback position, you got to get him in there. I'm just kidding guys. That was a terrible joke. But um, look, yeah, Brock Purdy, ninety four hundred, dude. I I I like him at captain. Um, man, I I, I like Gino at captain at his price too. Brock, there's a real world in like he ends up with like two rushing touchdowns because that's what happens when you have all the weapons back for the Niners except for Christian McCaffrey, right? So um, and and again, if this is a get right game for him, three touchdowns, passing touchdowns, two hundred and fifty yards, ninety four hundred, that might be enough, right? Um. So uh, I like him a lot. Uh, Geno Smith, same. I think um, I think it's a case can be made to, to consider fading him. Maybe you go Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf. You soak up the points that way from uh, 
uh, Seattle. Um, I think there's a world in which you can consider uh, uh, fading him. Again, uh, the Niners haven't necessarily allowed a 300-yard passer, but um, on a short week, I don't necessarily tend to favor like defenses um, and, and who are banged up. Fred Warner is still a little bit uh, not 100%, right? And like these are things that can really impact you on a Thursday night. Maybe not on a, a Saturday, but on a Thursday night, you, you're not practicing throughout the week, right? You're not actually practicing because you're walkthroughs. Um, so these are things that I think it, it can impact you. So I'm going to have a decent amount of Geno Smith. I'm going to be a smart bar pretty. Yeah. I mean, they're priced, they're priced well. I mean, there's, there's yeah. some, there, there's a lot of guys on the slate that we're going to get to, especially a wide receiver that are like, wow, that's, that's a really good price for them. Let's go to running back. Let's start with San Francisco. So Jordan Mason, 10.2 K he's expensive. But, you know, we've seen the Seahawks defense the last few weeks. Um, you know, I, I know they didn't necessarily give up a ton of yards on the ground against the Lions, but those guys, you know, yards per carry wise crushed. I, I believe the number is like 4.7 yards per carry this year when it comes to Seahawks defense. Jordan Mason feels like the obvious play. Like, um, and when it comes to Sims, um, for GPPs and for single entries, he's like by far, uh, my highest exposed captain when I run Sims without making any adjustments, uh, that jumps out to me obviously as, as being a pretty good play. Now he's going to be pretty high owned, but he's expensive. So you put him at the captain. It's, uh, you know, you're gonna have to make a couple tough decisions. You're gonna have to leave guys like DK Metcalf. You're gonna you have to leave quarterbacks off. Maybe you fade, you know, maybe, maybe you, you fade Purdy in the flex. I don't know. He's so damn expensive, but I'm going to get to a ton of him. There's, there's no world where I'm going to try to massively limit him. Maybe I'll build, like I'll hand build a entry into the big contest and just leave him out completely. But like, that's not going to be my strategy in fading him. But if you had big balls and you said F it, uh, <laughs> one way to get different pretty easily is just to fade Jordan Mason. I just don't see it as being super smart tonight on this one. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to be with the, to agree with you on that one. Uh, Jordan Mason, uh, being he'll be a staple in most of my lineups. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, I'll necessarily have at captain, but um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if there's many scenarios where he doesn't get there. Uh, Seattle defense is going to have to choose to to stop something and I think they're going to try and keep the passing game in front of them, which I think people don't realize how big Jordan Mason is, man. He's a big bruising running back. Like I was watching him uh, a couple weeks ago. He's, he's a, he's an old school running back. He's a lot different than Christian McCaffrey. I know Christian McCaffrey's strong, but he's, he's elusive and fast. Jordan Mason's a big cruising back and he can carry the ball 20, 25 times. So, um, I don't know, man, I, I think you just have to play him. Um, maybe you get different by not having a bunch of them in captain and just let him let it ride in the flex. Uh, but just real quick, I like Isaac uh, Corendo. I don't know how to say his name. I know last week was kind of a, a, a revenge narrative um, for the fourth string guy uh, who had some time in Arizona. But uh, he is getting a little bit of, of time. Where Jordan Mason's only on the field 79, 80%. And those, those extra snaps are going to, to Isaac, it looks like. Um, Kyle G- Gishwich, however you say his name, he's always on the field, but he's not getting much work unless it's in the pass game. So I think I kind of just defer to uh, Garendo and then just uh, put like any time touchdown on Gishwich and Kyle G. Yeah, Yuschek is fourteen hundred. Uh, I mean, it's a great price. Don't get me wrong, but he's one of these guys that you want to see like an eight hundred, six hundred, four hundred. Um, because he just doesn't get a lot of work. Yeah, he, I think he has like seven receptions this year or something. Uh, and if he gets a touchdown at fourteen hundred, probably gonna need him. But I, I, I think I'd rather just go with Garendo here for six hundred dollars more. Uh, all right, let's move over to the other side. So Seattle, two damn good running backs here, man. Kenneth Walker, ninety eight hundred. Zach Charbonnet, thirty four hundred. Kenneth Walker gets involved in the in the pass game as well. Uh, which is huge. 
I do feel like there is some opportunity for Walker to get some run, but it's just it's all, it's all going to be about this offense and how committed they are to making the run work. And at what point are they going to abandon it? And they're just going to have Geno drop back for an entire half and just throw the ball. That's what worries me. Uh, Kenneth Walker at 9,800 is priced pretty well. Zach Charbonnet, 3,400. That's a, that is a, a, that feels too low for him. I feel like he should be in the 5k range. Um, Zach Charbonnet feels like a misprice. And if this is a situation where we think the 49ers could get up, you know, I, I, I don't think that's a bold take. We see the 49ers up by two touchdowns in the second half. Who do you think is going to be in the game? It's probably going to be Zach Charbonnet. If we see a lot of these issues with penalties uh, from the Seahawks, you know, it, they get a third and 14, you get a 11 or 12 yard screen pass to Zach Charbonnet. I mean, that's huge. A couple of those a game mixed with a little bit of volume. That stuff adds up real quick. But I do think that Kenneth Walker is is in play for captain. I think he's in play for the flex. If you had to like gun to, gun to my head, choose one guy to fade as far as like between Mason and Walker, well, it's definitely Walker. But I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to, to be under the field. He's coming in around 40% owned. I'll probably be right around there, maybe a little bit above the field in the captain just to get different. But I think most of my captain exposure is going to these 49ers skill players and some Purdy. Uh, so I'm just not going to have a ton of room for Kenneth Walker in the captain spot. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, I okay, look, you got to get some Kenneth Walker on the captain spot because uh, the problem is he's he's one of these insane ceiling guys. He's he's probably going to go get five carries for 20 yards and, you know, four receptions for 40 yards. But what, what did he have the week before? 12 carries, 80 yards, three touchdowns. And then week one, 20, 103 yards and a touchdown, right? So, like, that matters at the at, at a 9,800 price. So, like, I don't know if you go zero at uh, captain. Um, I think uh, I think I might actually have more of him at captain than I'm going to of Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason, I'm just going to have in every flex lineup. But here is one thing that I will say is um, Kenneth Walker is also coming off of injuries. He's always hurt. Um, maybe there is a reason why he's not getting more than 12 carries since he's been back, right? Um, and he's splitting so much time with uh, Charbonnet. Uh, so <clears throat> I, I do think um, I, I think you're spot on that uh, you should have some lineups that are probably fading him. And honestly, fading him to a point where you think Zach Charbonnet is going to pick up uh, a consistent amount of the workload. Um, I think Zach was at 39% of the snaps last week. So he's even getting on the field with Walker on the field. They're running two, ta- two, two running back sets with both these guys out there. Um, so short week, injury prone guys, like 14th string right guard and right tackle. Like at some point, <laughs> you're going to be rotating running backs here. So uh, I think you're spot on with Zach Charbonnet. I think 3400 was quite clearly the best uh, value play on the slate, unless we get something at like 800 that opens up that's better. Th- this guy probably is going to be in 90 percent of my lineups, man. You're talking about Charbonnet. Yeah, Charbonnet. Yeah, Kenneth Walker to me is one of these guys that you know. You turn on the game. It's 8:20, 8:15, whatever time it is. You sit down, you're excited, and on the second drive of the game, he goes to the blue tent, and your night's screwed. Yeah, like he just always feels like this guy. Um, <laughs> that's not uh, you know affecting my my exposure to him. It's just my comfortability if I'm heavy on him uh, is not very high. <laughs> I will say that. Let's go to let's go to wide receivers here. We'll stick with Seattle. DK Metcalf nine K. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, Jackson Smith and Good Juba. Uh, he is at 7K. Tyler Lockett, 5,400. The bane of my existence, LaVisca Chenault, $400. Crap. We got a LaVisca Chenault showdown slate. Great. I'm going to lose a crap load of money trying to play this guy. Jake Bobo, 1K. Derek Young, which for whatever reason... Uh, on the Sims, his 1.06 uh, projection uh, on a Wednesday night is jamming him into all my all my single entry builds. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, but look, DK Metcalf last week, 
you know, you look on, you, you look in the box score. I think he had like what fifty five yards and a couple catches. He had a fumble. Definitely not a good game, but man, I, honestly, like I almost, I if I didn't see his stats from last week, I would have thought he had one catch. I mean, he was invisible last week. Um, I, he's one of these guys where I will never fade him again because he's a slate breaker. And on a Thursday night last year, I don't remember when it was, but I think he had like an 80 yard touchdown, like on the first play or second play or something like that. I forgot which game that was, but I chose to be under the field on him. Um, I, I'm just not going to do that anymore. He's, re- he's projected around 30% owned. I'll have some, some captain exposure to him. But, you know, a guy like Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, Jackson Smith and a good Juba. A 7K. Uh, he's he's coming on, man. He's clearly that number two guy in the slot now. Tyler Lockett, though, last week led the team in, in receiving. We thought he was all... He, we, we basically thought he was dead. If this guy could stand up after the catch and get more than zero yards uh, in yak, this guy would be... Leading the league in re- in receiving yards, almost. I mean, fifty four hundred for him, but he falls down every damn time he catches the ball. Dude, he's just too cheap. Tyler Lockett. Am I going to lose a shitload of money playing Tyler Lockett this week? What do we think about these wide receivers? Yeah, I think you uh, hit the nail on the head. DK Metcalf. Um, I mean, at this point, he is the alpha on this team. I know we used to have a lot of dis- discussion around whether it was DK, whether it was Tyler Lockett. It's for sure uh, DK. Um, now that said, I, I'm not. I, I'm not. Uh, he, he's still a boomer bust type guy. So I think you got to have some exposure to him and captain, have him in the flex. But uh, you'd probably be even with the field. I don't think he, he he's a requirement on your lineups. Um, now uh, when we're looking at uh, JSN, man, JSN, he's looked good. He's been getting a very very high volume of targets. Uh, Jackson um, Smith so and Juba. <laughs> 7K, man, um, I think you, again, like, I think he's probably a fine captain option. Uh, I I don't, I think because of Zach Charbonnet's price and even Tyler Lockett's price, um, the, the pricing is soft in, enough in general that you can probably stay pretty close to some of the top tier captains. But, you know, some of the larger uh, 150 max or large field GPPs, I think you can get a little bit more uh, crazy and, Man, Tyler Lockett at fifty four hundred, dude. I don't give. I, I really don't care what anybody says, or even, even if he's quietly. Uh, if people just don't, are, are, I think people are sleeping on him. Man, he. You're right. He led. Uh, he led the team um, in, in yards last week, seventy five. He's one of these guys. who's quietly going to go get um, his eight hundred to thousand yards per season. Yep. Um, and there's really just not much you can do about it, right? And I think it benefits him having JSN emerge a little bit. You, you just forget forget that Tyler Lockett's out there. And if there's one guy that can leak past the safety and end up in the end zone, that's that's who Tyler Lockett is. So um, I think, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to build any rules, but I'll likely have one of these guys in most every lineup. Yeah, I mean, if we're going under the premise of, uh, you know, Geno coming out, throwing the ball 45 times, whatever that is, I mean, you have to have these at least one of these three guys, I feel like. Um, and to me, Tyler Lockett is one of these guys that you can fit in the second to last spot or throw him at captain at 5,400. He feels like he's got, you know, 10 points feels like, yeah, 10 points for, for Tyler Lockett, no doubt. And having that in the flex, is that enough? Maybe. But he feels like one of these guys that you can count on. Uh, JSN is you know he's he got there last week he had a touchdown dk metcalf non-existent uh but i don't care if this guy goes 10 straight weeks without a touchdown or without having a good game he's always in play man dk metcalf is one of these freaks of nature that can take one to the house from anywhere we got to remember it doesn't matter what he's been doing lately he's always one of these guys that can absolutely break the slate let's go to the other side so let's sort by salary here. Debo's 8,800. He hasn't really, I mean, you look at his box scores, you look at his fantasy output, pretty decent to start the year. He hasn't really been doing much lately. In my opinion, if this offense wants to get going, they're going to start feeding Debo. We're talking short passes, trick plays, end arounds, 
little jet sweeps, whatever it is, just get him involved on the first damn drive. Brandon Ayuk last week, you know, he's 8,400. Last week he went off. He's he looked he looked good. Didn't get in the end zone. Neither one of these dudes, Debo or Ayuk, has a receiving touchdown this year. Ayuk has no touchdowns. Debo has a rushing touchdown. That's going to change. We know that's going to change. You got to consider either one of these guys is going to get getting uh, get into the end zone this week. I feel like this is a Debo week. I just feel it. I don't know why. I don't have any justification for that. This feels like a Debo week. Eighty eight hundred. Juwan Jennings four K. This guy's turned into one of the best number three wide receivers in the league, if you think about it, man. When they needed him, he stepped up. He looked amazing. He's 4K. Wow, did we just get a little sim update there? I think we did. Um, I'm going to get some exposure. He's probably going to be around 20% owned. He's probably a pretty decent play. I I don't think I'm going any captain with Jawan Jennings. I think they're going to focus on their top guys. Besides that, man, what are you thinking here? I, f- I feel like this is another situation where you almost have to min, min one one of these guys, and, and you probably throw Kittle into, into the mix for that as well. But is this a Debo week, man? Are you feeling it? Yeah, I, I like Debo this week. I, I, again, it, I think one of the things that we haven't seen yet this year is um, uh, Debo getting really involved in the run game. He's had a few carries here and there. In week one, he had eight. Uh, since then, and last week was his most with uh, three carries. Um, this is a good opportunity to get him involved in that. You got Brandon Ayuk uh, is going to be out there kind of on island without Tariq Woolen. I know I can't remember who the second corner is, but they have another young corner who's pretty solid out in Seattle. That That is going to leave Jawan Jennings out there available on, on, on an island, right? So I think it's going to open up something for one of these wide receivers. I'm with you. I, I, I think you uh, add George Kittle in. You probably have a mid one if you're, you're, you're doing rules. But um, I, this probably is a deep week. Uh, I think he – Here's here's a bet that I will place. So I'll do a, a parlay if DraftKings doesn't have bullshit odds. First of all, let me clarify that they've been having pretty pretty shitty touchdown odds. But if they have decent odds, I'll do a parlay of a Debo rushing touchdown and Ayuk receiving touchdown. I don't think it matters. I think it's just any time touchdown. But they, that's something that I could see happening, right? I think uh, they're kind of getting everybody back. Um, this is an opportunity to. Uh, spread the offense out a little bit and start using some of your weapons again and settling in. It's week five now, right? Like we, it, it, it you've gone through your your preseason pretty much because nobody plays preseason. It's time to find out who these teams are, and I think we're going to see a little bit bit out of that. So um, yeah, I like Debo. I like Ayuk. Um, I like Jawan Jennings a lot too. Four uh, K. I still think. Um, it, 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 it's weird, man. You, I don't. I wasn't expecting to have this many guys in that two to four k range. I'd be comfortable with, but between Jawan Jennings, Charbonnet, and uh, well, uh, I, who is the other guy? I don't say, Tyler Lockett's cheap, but anyways, there's enough value out there already that I'm comfortable with on this slate. By the way, it's week six. That's how damn fast these years go Jesus. by, man. Um, you know, last week Darius Slayton looked like a freaking all pro against this defense. Uh, Wandell Robinson got there. This feels like, like I said, like like Purdy, at least one of these pass catchers, maybe two. I think in that situation, you probably are going to have to fade Jordan Mason. Maybe you could fit it in like a 4-2. Maybe do like a mid-range captain, maybe a Seahawks guy at captain and fit in a four stack with a passing attack and Jordan Mason. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of dudes on the slate and, and seeing that Debo Samuel's 8,800. Brandon Ayuk's 8,400. Debo just feels right. Debo's always one of these guys that's 9,800, 10K. I know he hasn't been playing well. This feels like the opportunity where his ownership's going to be low because we're there's some uncertainty. Jam him in the captain. Jam him in the flex. I feel like he's, he's, a, he's a great play. All right, let's go to tight end. All right, so George Kittle, 7,400. Is this a George Kittle nuclear three-touchdown game, or is this blocking for every snap, helping his team win, and getting two targets? Uh, (laughs) I honestly don't know. Uh, I feel like those are the options usually, though. Uh, But 7,400, man, it feels like a good captain spot. Like I said, if I'm making a group with Debo, uh, Kittle, and Ayuk, min one, probably... 
Uh, what are you thinking with Kittle here, man? I, I, I just always feel like it's hard to kind of judge. But with the injuries on this defense for Seattle, he's a guy that by himself can – we saw it. He caught a ball over three three dudes in the end zone a few weeks ago. Yeah, man, um, I like George Kittle. And uh, I think he's quietly back up to tight end one, tight end two uh, in fantasy this season. Not that that's really saying all that much. I have a joke. Can't really say it here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's not really saying all that much. Just the tight end position is so so weak this year. But uh, eventually, I think uh, DraftKings will catch on to that and start pricing them up a little bit. So I do think this is an opportunity to take advantage of him at, at, at some suppressed pricing. He's he's getting uh, involved. He's what second on the team in targets uh, with with twenty nine. So he's two ahead of Debo. Um, no, it's not a one for one comparison. Debo gets a uh, volume in the running game, right? But um, it, it is it is notable. Oh, sorry, Jawan Jennings has two more at thirty one. But anyways, uh, at seventy four hundred, I, I I do think you need to consider George Kittle, um, and he is a guy that could get overlooked with uh, so much attention that needs to be focused on Tariq and being out. You got two. A plus wide receivers on the outside that uh, it, it it will be easy for that get that Kittle's there, um, you know, splitting uh, uh, the safeties or, or kind of covering uh, coming up the middle of the field. So um, I like him a lot. Uh, I think you need to have a little bit of captain exposure. He's going to give you some flexibility to build some lineups that you may not get uh, otherwise. Um, but outside of that, I don't think you need to have any exposure to these other guys. Eric Sauber will be active most likely, but uh, he's he's blocking guy. Um, he doesn't have any, you know, five targets on the year, but earlier in the season. So I, I really don't think that he's going to get involved. Let's go to Seattle. Good old Noah Fant at 3K. I feel like he's always hovering around this price. He, you know, he feels like a Conklin type guy where there's some upside. They're cheap. He's a starting guy. He's going to be on the field. Uh, but you know, if he gets you six fantasy points, you're probably, you know, that's probably what's going to happen. Three uh, K, dude. I don't know, man. Uh, what are we thinking? No fan. I, I honestly have no opinion on him. He's coming in around seventeen percent. It feels like if I had zero, I, I would be okay with that. It feels like if I had 25, 30%, I'd be okay with that as well. I, it's, it's, it's a coin flip with this guy. What do you think? Yeah, um, I think there's better options uh, in that price range, so I, I don't think I'm getting there. Uh, he's just not seeing the volume that you think you would see for a team that's only running the ball 8 to 10 times a game, right? If you're throwing the ball 50 times a game, you'd think your tight end would have 5 to 10 targets a game. That's that's not what he's got. He's got most he has in the seasons, week 3 with 6. Outside of that, uh, he's three or under pretty much. So, um, sure, he's fine if you need a guy to throw in. Um, but at 20%, I think you're fine coming under the field here. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather just go Charbonnet at, what, $200 more? Uh, a, yeah. Like, kind of around the same ownership, potentially. I mean, I, I feel like Charbonnet is more in the 25% range, maybe even a little higher. But I'd rather just go with him over Noah Fant. I'm not going to, I'm literally going to, whatever Saber Sim does based off of what I tell it to do, wherever Noah Fant falls, I'm just going to let it ride. I don't really care. All right. Um, let's move on to kicker and defense. These, these kickers, man, 5K for Jason Myers. He hasn't really been having a great year by any means. Jake Moody's out. So now we've got, is it Matthew Wright? At 4,600, I, I guess we'll double check that. I'm not going to spend my time looking at captains. Whoever we, whoever uh, Saber Sim has as the starter, I'll get to the field with him in a game like this. Um, you know, probably coming in at 20, 25 percent owned. It's a showdown slate in 2024. We gotta, we gotta have kickers in our player pool. We gotta be with the field or over. Uh, before we talk about defense. Uh, what are we doing with kickers? Because I feel like we've always talked about just hit the button and replay the same take every single week. But if in some of these games, these kickers are getting 25 fantasy points. If you don't have them in the flex, you don't even have a chance to cash. Yeah. And um, I think, uh, I think what, uh, what, what that's been in, what I've learned from that is uh, pay a little bit more attention to the offensive line. Offensive line play is probably, and maybe we can get some analysis done on this. I don't know who, who that's directed at. Uh, somebody who's listening who's smarter than us uh, 
do some uh, regression here, but um, like I, I, I think there's there's correlation between offensive lines that suck and stalling out in the red zone, right, or in field goal range. Um, Seattle's a perfect example of that. What, what they have their 14th string right guard and right tackle, so. <laughs> Um, that's a recipe for disaster. That's uh, Jason Myers is going to get back up on the horse. Um, he could have five, six, seven attempts. Uh, and Vegas is planning for something stupid anyways, where they got 23 points for uh, Seattle is essentially the implied total. Yeah. That's some bullshit. That's, that's three field goals. So I don't know. Yeah. It, I, I think until we see something otherwise, like it's just stupid to not play kickers at this point. All right, uh, 49ers defense, 4,200, Seahawks, 3,800. I don't know, man. I don't have a, a, a firm take on this. We've seen Purdy be able to turn the ball over sometimes. A lot of the times, you know, sometimes it's his fault, but, like, last week we saw a lot of tip balls at the line of scrimmage. Um, we saw, you know, maybe there's a special team type play. We saw the, the, the Seahawks score last week. And then we saw them give up a touchdown on, on, at the end of the game on that on that field goal attempt. I don't know, man. Just be with the field. I don't have any sort of bold take here. I don't think you need to go out of your way to play defenses like more than the field. They're probably coming around 10% owned. I don't think they'll be super popular, especially with a 49 total. And I think this game could get out of hand and get a little sloppy. The Seahawks defense, with how injured they are, if they give up 35 points, I mean, you're screwed, man. Um, unless they get a pick six or a scoop and score. Thirty eight hundred is a fine price, but I'd just rather just play Charbonnet. Any, anything else to add there? Yeah. No, man. It sounds like your uh, your earbuds or something are being like stepped on or something. You have a weird like weird feedback or a weird uh, clicking noise. Let's get into our captains here. Let's play the sound. We're going to crown their ass on DraftKings. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. Ellie, you're going George Kittle. You're a you're a tight end, a captain kind of guy. And when George Kittle's on a slate, I don't blame you. I'm going Debo Samuel, man. Uh, like I said, this is just pure vibes as far as you know. His price is good. This feels like a Debo situation. Like I said, if they want to kickstart this offense, just get Debo. Get him the ball in whatever way that is. Whether that's having him throw for a touchdown. You know, hand the ball off to him, throw it across the field, throw it deep. Whatever you got to do to get the de- get Debo the ball, just do it. What do you think about Kittle here, man? Like I said, this is one of these guys who can go nuclear, but I feel like Debo is the same kind of guy. Yeah, I look Kittle. I think I, I'm more comfortable with just because of his price. I think uh, I think he's just in a good spot to give you a little bit of flexibility. If he doesn't have a nuclear game, he could still be an optimal captain just because he's given you some savings at that spot. Do I sound a little bit better now? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's next we're gonna go to our Kime segment. This is our Kime's cranked out play of the night. No other than Steve Kime. I'm like, come on, bro. Just like Steve Kime, this is us talking about guys we know we shouldn't be playing, but we do anyways. For me, dude. I'm going to be playing way too much LaVisca Chenault. I just can't help it, man. He looks so cool out there. He looks like a guy that can absolutely take it to the house. He's he's on special teams. He's getting kick returns. He's getting punt returns. He's only getting like 10 snaps a game on offense. But, you know, one long little jet sweep or something like that to him going 30 or 40 yards, maybe that's enough at his price. Please tell me not to play LaVisca Chenault. Just, just tell me to uncheck him because it's going to hurt. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to tell you to play Jake Bobo. I think he has a touchdown. <laughs> I think Jake Bobo has a touchdown on Tuesday. <laughs> one catch, twelve yards, one touchdown, and then he retires. <laughs> All right, let's get to our lineup builds. Throw us a like, guys. Let's get to fifty likes. Subscribe. We're going to try to we're going to try to put out the Monday night game, depending on whether or not I have power. I have no idea how the storm's going to go. We'll see uh, if I do. Then we'll try to get that show done. We'll post that Monday morning. Jump in the Discord as well. Let's build a single entry. All right. Let, let's let's not refer to this as cash. Let's refer to this as a single entry. Maybe the fifty dollar or a hundred dollar where there's maybe a couple hundred entries and you can get pretty high floor, pretty high ownership without getting too crazy. 
Uh, so what does that mean here? Is this a Jordan Mason lineup? Is this a Purdy captain? Like, where would you go? Or are you just going to go for high floor and maybe super low ownership in, in a small field single entry and go with, you know, one of these pass catchers that might be under 10% at the captain? Yeah, I mean, so this is an interesting one. Uh, I think Jordan Mason is probably the, the obvious, one of the obvious choices, but uh, I might toy with the idea of a single entry with uh, Tyler Lockett, a captain. <laughs> just, I, 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 I don't want to start too crazy off the bat, but he, he just gives you so much flexibility, man. I know. You can do whatever you want. It's true, man, and I hate that you said that because I totally agree with you. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Um, <laughs> let's just let's try it. Right. Let's just try sure. now to get both quarterbacks in. That, that allows us to do that. It allows us to get Jordan Mason. And, I mean, look at this. We still got sixty five hundred, you know, per spot here. Uh, it feels like a mispricing guy, a mispriced guy like Charbonnet, um, has a high floor, and he feels like he could go off. It feels like grabbing Charbonnet here, and then going all the way up to like a DK Metcalf or a Debo Samuel. Or Ayuk or Kenneth. Yeah. I mean, it leaves you with a ton of options. Now, it would have been kind of nice to get to, to Kenneth Walker. We're a hundred dollars short. You know, DraftKings. I'm sure they did that intentionally. Uh, but you know, for the sake of this, uh, where would we go here? Would you want to do uh, probably a three-three? Since we've already got Lockett in the captain, we got Gino with him in the flex. We want to go Debo or Ayuk here. Um, I'd probably go. Uh, I I think I would go Iuke. I think Depot is probably a safer GPP play. Safer, probably not the best way to say that. Brandon Ayuk is going to get his his volume, twelve targets, hundred yards. So we see what's going. I mean, this is this is still a damn good large field GPP. I, I mean, I get it. I, yeah. If if Charbonnet is really coming in around twenty percent owned, you get Tyler Lockett. That's probably three percent in the captain. Feels like it could be a decent option, but you know, in order to get both quarterbacks in, we kind of got to do one of these weird Seattle cheap guys in the in the captain. Almost. Let's move to you know. I think generally speaking, probably Jordan Mason is the way to go here, um, or a guy like a guy like Kenneth Walker even uh, for single entry if you're looking for safe. Uh, let's do all right. So. Let's do Debo captain. Let's just start there, and then we'll go down to Kittle for for GPPs, like large field, you know, 200,000 entry type things. So if we're doing that, we got to get weird. We got to we have to accept that by looking at our lineup, it's just not going to be super comfortable. Um, and in this case, what do you think about doing like a Debo and a Purdy? Fade Jordan Mason, fade Ayuk, fade Kittle, and run it back with like four... Uh, four Seahawks. Let's do it. All right, so l- let's go Gino. So we got both quarterbacks. We got Debo at captain. This makes it kind of hard to build, but I think we got to get weird. So what do you think about going like Gino and Kenneth Walker? Yeah, I think. Can we do Charbonnet too? Well, we can. That's weird. Um. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we're so close to lock it, dude, too. <laughs> so close to lock it. Um, we can't get to uh, Jackson Smith and a good Juba. We can do Fant, or or leave some money on the table. Go Lavisca Chanel. I mean, like this is the kind of weird shit you got to do in these big tournaments, unless you want to dupe with fifty other people. Um, Purdy Debo two four stack. That's kind of interesting. Let's pull out Kenneth Walker here. Do do you want do we want to go with DK Metcalf? We're saving a little bit of money. Do Metcalf and lock it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Exactly. So we leave four hundred on the table. We got Debo at captain, Purdy, Geno, DK, Charbonnet, Lockett. It's kind of interesting. That feels like it could be duped. Um, it, it does, but. I, it's not gonna f- hold me back from playing lineups like this that that just looks so good. All right, let's go. So we 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 see what we can do with Debo captain. It's gonna be easier with Kittle. 
Let's see what that means. All right. So do you want to do you want to go like onslaught? I feel like Kittle when he goes off, he has three touchdowns. It's like forty-two to 17, 49ers win. That's just that always seems to happen. Is is this like an onslaught like four-two or five-one situation here for for the Forty ers Yeah, let's try that. Let's actually go. Uh, let's go Mason and um, Party. And then let's do uh, Jason Myers and Zach Charbonnet. And let's just see where we're at. Wherever we want to be. Oh, that's cool. You could leave some money on the table. Uh, we're going to. Go ahead and throw in Debo, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, I mean, that right there doesn't, a, doesn't feel duped, like at all. And that that's a fun onslaught lineup, and... This kind of makes sense. This is uh, Kenneth Walker's me just fucking died, <laughs> right? Charbonnet is yeah. keeping their asses in it. Jason Meyer got his three field goals. I don't, yeah. I don't hate that man. Obviously, really easy to build. With yeah, yeah, and it, it feels like, generally speaking, I mean, we didn't build with Jordan Mason at captain, but it feels like, generally speaking, like building is okay like you got to make one decision tough decision and a lot of times on the slate you got to make like two or three when it comes to showdown so it feels like there's still plenty of options um jordan mason is probably the best captain play but there's so many other guys that could go nuclear in this game if if we get closer to lock and we've seen that jordan mason is f- by far like the highest owned projected captain I might be a little bit under on him. I might have to limit him in Saber Sim and go with some of these guys like more like Debo, IU, Kittle, Phil, uh, Philip Walker, Kenneth Walker, those kind of guys, and maybe even get a little Purdy in. All right, what's your uh, what's your prediction here, man? What'd you learn as we uh, as we end this? Um, so prediction, I've got uh, twenty-seven seventeen uh, San Francisco. Um, learned that. Uh, I don't know, man. You can't ask me shit like that. It's too late. Um, I don't know. I'm going to play Isaac Arendo more than I planned on. 34-24 49ers. See you guys later.